Hello students, welcome to the lecture on trial balance and rectification of errors. After this lecture, you will be able to learn the following objectives. Explain the concept of trial balance. Discuss the objectives of trial balance. Describe the methods of preparing a trial balance. Elaborate the rectification of errors. Describe the emphasis on the different types of errors. Define the suspense account. Now let us know more about basic concepts of trial balance. A trial balance is prepared when all accounts in the ledger are balanced. It is a simple listing of all general ledger accounts and their respective balances. Therefore, the trial balance encompasses the summary of all ledger balances outstanding on a particular date. It includes debit and credit balances taken from ledger accounts. In a trial balance, the sum of the debit side must be equal to the sum of the credit side. The trial balance is considered as a tool to verify the accuracy of the debit and credit amounts. This provides a check on the arithmetic accuracy of the ledger of a business under the double entry bookkeeping system. Concept of trial balance Now let us first see this video explaining trial balance and its use. Ledger accounts along with their respective debit or credit balances. It's primarily used as a self-check to determine that debits equal credits at any particular point in time. In an automated accounting system, a trial balance may not even be necessary, although one could be printed off. The trial balance here for this particular company shows all of the accounts that are in use by the company along with their respective balance. Notice in particular that total debits equal total credits. This is not the same as total assets or total expenses or total revenues or total equities. It's merely all of the debits and all of the credits summarized. The trial balance is a very useful tool to determine if errors have occurred. If the trial balance is not in balance, then certainly something has gone wrong and it's necessary to go back and look at the recording of the individual transactions and how they were posted to the ledger accounts. Even if a trial balance is in balance, there's still a possibility that there might be some particular error. For example, if a transaction failed to be recorded, or if a transaction were recorded twice, or if a transaction was posted to the wrong ledger account, debits might still equal credits, yet the trial balance would be in balance. So while it's a good self-check, it's not an absolute assurance that no errors in the accounting system. The trial balance can lead to the preparation of financial statements. Basically, amounts are transferred from the general ledger account to the trial balance, and from that trial balance, financial statements might be prepared. We're going to see in Chapter 3 additional adjustments that might be necessary following the preparation of a trial balance. But for now, let's simply assume that there are no adjustments that are necessary. So again, reviewing. We have the general ledger. And remember the general ledger. The amounts that are in the general ledger are the result of posting from a general journal. The transactions and events are posted from the journal into the ledger. The balances in the general ledger are then used to prepare the trial balance, and the trial balance is the takeoff point for preparing financial statements or reports. Balance sheet to balance. And so basically what we now know is the trial balance is primarily a tool to check for the equality of debits and credits prior to the actual preparation of financial statements. After posting transactions in a ledger account and balancing the account, a statement is prepared to show the debit and credit balances separately. Such a statement is called a trial balance which is prepared by using the debit and credit totals or balances of all ledger accounts to determine the arithmetical accuracy of the recordings of the financial transactions of a business. The balance of an account is the difference between the totals of the debit side and credit side. If the debit side total is greater, it is called debit balance. However, if the credit side total is greater, it is called credit balance. A trial balance is further divided into five columns. The following is a brief description of these columns. Serial number records the serial number of a transaction. Name of account records the names of the accounts that are prepared in a ledger. Ledger folio LF records the page number of a ledger. Debit amount 
records the debit balance of a ledger account credit amount records the credit balance of a ledger account objectives of trial balance the trial balance aims at examining the arithmetical accuracy of books of account the objectives of trial balance are discussed as follows making accounts arithmetically accurate implies that trial balance is prepared by matching the totals of debit and credit side that ensures the mathematical accuracy of accounts however matching of the debit and credit balance is not a conclusive evidence of the accuracy of accounts as it only checks if the debits and credits are recorded in equal amounts helping in locating the errors implies that if the trial balance does not match it indicates that there are errors in the accounts these errors can occur at any stage of the accounting process such as while totaling of subsidiary books posting of journal entries in ledger calculating account balances etc providing a basis for financial statements implies that a trial balance is considered as the first step in the preparation of financial statements of an organization it acts as a link between the accounting records and the preparation of financial statements summarizing all ledger accounts implies that a trial balance serves as a summary of all ledger accounts and provides the complete picture of each account in the ledger methods of preparing a trial balance there are two methods of preparing a trial balance which are discussed as follows total method refers to the method in which the total of the debit and credit sides of ledger accounts excluding the closing balances is shown in the trial balance with the help of this method the trial balance can be prepared immediately after the posting of transactions from journal to ledger books balance method refers to the method in which only the closing balances of ledger accounts including cash and bank account are shown in the trial balance these balances help in summarizing the net effect of all the transactions relating to an account which in turn facilitates the preparation of financial statements with the help of this method the trial balance can be prepared only when the balancing of all the ledger accounts is complete limitations of trial balance the limitations of trial balance are as follows difficult to adopt trial balance as an evidence of arithmetic accuracy of the accounting records even if the debit and credit balances of the trial balance tally it does not mean that the recording and posting of accounts are flawless consider as expensive because the concept of trial balance is based on the double entry bookkeeping system thus it is hard for small scale organizations and sole traders to adapt the trial balance fail to represent the fair and true state of the business if the final accounts are prepared on the basis of a faulty trial balance rectification of errors the errors in a trial balance may occur at the time of recording classifying or summarizing the financial transactions even when the trial balance is correct some errors may remain in the accounting records the errors can be of two types namely errors that affect the trial balance and errors that do not affect the trial balance however both types of errors should be identified and rectified the process of rectifying the errors and correcting the accounting records is termed as rectification of errors all the errors can be classified into the four categories errors of omission an error of omission arises when a transaction is not recorded in the books of accounts either completely or partially errors of partial recording of transaction are different from the errors of complete recording of transaction as the errors of partial recording results in improper trial balance but the errors of complete recording does not errors of commission 
errors of commission arises due to wrong recording, wrong posting, wrong carrying forward, wrong casting of subsidiary books or wrong balancing. Such errors may occur due to the negligence of the accountant and are clerical in nature. Errors of commission can occur due to the following reasons. By entering a wrong amount in the correct subsidiary books. By recording a correct amount in the wrong subsidiary book. Errors of principle. The accounting transaction should be recorded according to the generally accepted accounting principles. When a transaction is recorded as an infringement of the accounting principle, it is known as an error of principle. Such errors do not affect the trial balance as the entry of transaction is made on the correct side of the account, but the value of entry or the amount of transaction is incorrect. The rectification of such errors is very important as they directly affect financial statements. Such errors may occur due to the following reasons. Lack of discrepancy between the revenue and capital items. The revenue receipt may be taken as capital receipt or vice versa. Lack of distinction between the business expenses and personal expenses. Lack of distinction between the productive and non-productive expenses. Compensating errors. Compensating errors are those one that are nullified by errors of equal proportion. It means that one accounting error is compensated by another error. It may happen that an error in an account is occurred and the same kind of error has taken place in another account. In such a case, it is hard to detect that error. Locating the errors. When trial balance is prepared, there can be two possibilities. Either the total of the balance tally or does not tally. If the balance does not tally, it indicates that at least one error has occurred. In such a case, the errors must be located and corrected before the preparation of financial statements. The errors can be located by implementing the following steps. Determine the summation of the debit and credit balances of the trial balance again. Determine whether the account title and the amount appearing in the trial balance are agreeing with that posted to the ledger. This helps in detecting the incorrect figures or omissions of an account. Compare the present year trial balance with that of the previous years so as to check if there is any unexpected increment or decrement in the amounts. Determine the accuracy of the balances of individual accounts in ledger by rechecking them. Determine the accuracy of the posting of transactions from journal to ledger books by rechecking them. Determine the differences between the debit and credit balances. If the difference is divisible by two, then it means that half of the difference amount is posted on the wrong side of another ledger account. Suspense account When a number of errors occur and the trial balance disagrees, it is difficult for the accountant to locate all the errors and rectify them. In this situation, the accountant introduces a suspense account in the trial balance to make it agree and proceed further to prepare the profit and loss account and the balance sheet. The accountant manages to tally the trial balance by putting the difference between the debit and credit side on the shorter side of trial balance. The suspense account can be considered as the net result of the one-sided errors. The following steps should be adopted while rectifying one-sided errors using the suspense account. Identify the account that is affected due to the accounting error. Determine the excess or short of debit credit amount in the affected account. In case debit amount is in excess or credit is short, then credit the account with the exceeded amount of debit. On the other hand, if the credit amount is in excess or debit is short, then debit the account with the exceeded amount of credit or short amount of debit. 
complete the journal entry by debiting or crediting the suspense account as required. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learnt in the lecture. Summary A statement containing the balance of all ledger accounts at any given date arranged in the form of debit and credit columns placed side by side and prepared with the object of checking the arithmetic accuracy of ledger positions. The balance of an account is the difference between the totals of the debit side and credit side. If the debit side total is greater, it is called debit balance. A trial balance is prepared when all accounts in the ledger are balanced. It is a simple listing of all general ledger accounts and their respective balances. The precision of recording in the journal entry and ledger posting is examined by preparing a periodic trial balance at the end of the accounting period. A trial balance is prepared to check the arithmetical accuracy of transactions recorded in a journal, post them into the ledger and balance ledger accounts.